your presence here this morning. And we thank you for sending your son to die for us. We worship you this morning. we're going to, uh, in a little bit, we're going to have some special prayer for all of our needs in our prayer box. And so I wanted to get that to you. I know it's kind of hard to write a prayer request and worship at the same time. We're going to give you a little bit of time to, to write on that in just a moment. Let's pray together. God, 
thank you. Thank you that we can come before you with everything that is in our lives right now. We can come before you and say, God, we're scared. We don't understand. God, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hurting. No matter what it is, we can come before you and give everything over to you, knowing and trusting you to do what's best. We just worship you. We worship you. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never
for the prayer slips. Some of you have already filled it out and put it in the prayer box uh, before service started. That song says, Jesus conquered the grave. He is mighty to save. If Jesus was powerful enough to conquer the grave, is he powerful enough to conquer what you're facing? I would say yes. That would be yes. Jesus is strong enough to conquer anything that's facing you. So I want you to think for a moment. What is it? that's in front of you right now that seems impossible. May it be for you personally, maybe it's for somebody else that you know. It could be a, an illness, financial situation, whatever that is. I want you to take a moment. I want you to write that on that prayer slip. And if it's for you, Remember what it was like before you had Christ in your life? How many of you remember that? Some of you accepted Christ at a very, very young age, but maybe don't remember all that. But how many of you remember just in your own life not having Christ 100% leading your life? How do we do that? How do we make it through, Mom? It's hard. We don't make it through without that. It's true. This next song, I need you more. More than ever before. More than my next heartbeat. More than the next song I sing. Because that line that gets me in this is because I never want to go back to my old life. I never want to go back to my old life. What does that mean for you? Maybe that's something that needs to go in your prayer slip. Jesus, help me to never have to go back to my old life. God has brought us through way too much for us to go back. I don't want to go any steps backwards. Always forward with Christ leading the way. you bow your heads, close your eyes, and praise team. We're going to sing through this first verse as you just continue to pray and ask God what have you to write on that slip of paper that we may be able to pray for in just a little bit. Now just focus on this life that Christ has given you.
that sheet of paper. It's impossible maybe in your eyes, but God says, nothing is impossible with me. And everything that you need, I've already provided. Every single thing you need, I have already provided. I've provided a way out. I've provided escape. I have provided healing. I've provided provision. I've provided companionship. Whatever it is that you need, God says, I've already provided. Now, your part is to say, okay, I trust you. I trust you with what I've written on this sheet of paper, God. I trust you. And stand on the promises that God has given you. God does not go back on any promise. Stand firm on that promise. As we sing this, I want you in faith to step up and come down here and put your prayer request in this prayer box and say, okay, God, by me doing this, I am trusting that you are going to answer my prayers. And then go back believing that God has already answered your prayers. Okay? Let's stand together as we worship. As we sing, like I said, come down, put your prayer request in the prayer box, and believe that God is already prepared. He's already
There's nothing magical in this box, but we take very seriously what you have put into this box, and we want you to know that we pray for these every day. So I want everybody just to stretch your hands towards this box, and we're going to pray for the needs. Father God, there's not a need in this box that you can't meet. And Father, we know it's your desire. It's your desire to see every need here met today. So Father, we agree with your word that says if we would ask, you would give. So Heavenly Father, right now in Jesus' name, we thank you for healing all of the healing needs that are represented in this box today. Father, I thank you that every need is met. You are the Jehovah Jireh. You have seen the need ahead of time and have already provided the answer. Father, every job, every pay increase, Father, every mate that's on their way, Father, I thank you that they don't come a day early. But Father, we're ready. They're ready. And Father, then we can see the miracle happen. Father, every person here today that has a need, Father, I thank you that in Jesus' name we claim those healings, those needs met now. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Amen. 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 I sure felt God on that. If you didn't, we're going to pray. 
you up from the grave. Uh, I, I, I know that uh, we've got several things we want to do. First off, I want to have Shaw down here because uh, Shaw has something to kind of share with us. Uh, how many of you think our community needs help? How many of you think they know that they need to know Jesus a whole lot more than they probably know it? Well, uh, Shaw. Uh, we're going to be doing an outreach next Friday. Blue, 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 blue. We're going to be doing an outreach next Friday. It's called Rolling Pin Massage Outreach. So that may be a foreign idea for some of you. So I'm going to show you kind of what we do. We set up a canopy, I guess you'd say, canopy out in front of near tent? the uh, subway. There's a, an area that's there in the parking that accommodates room for us. We have a table that's got a banner on it. It says Crossroads Community Church on one side, and then on the other side, it says everything Jesus had to say about homosexuality, and it's blank. And it says, but the Bible does say, and it lists salvation scriptures. And then at the end, it says the gospel really is good news. It says gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, God offers salvation, peace, and eternal life. And a changed life is a prayer away. Well, the people that come to get free massages, we have chairs, we've got four chairs, four rolling pins. I've asked Ashton to help me demonstrate. Come hither, Ashton. He sits down with the back of the chair facing him and just squat because you're young. No, nope. <laughs> in the knees and then he's, there you go. <laughs> Give me a little higher. Basically, it requires no skill on the part of the, massage, of the masseuse. Take the rolling pin and you roll their backs. Feels awesome. It is a wonderful way that we can touch the community, bless them, help them feel good, and they wonder, thank you, Ashton. They will always ask us, why are, why are you doing this? Oh, this is so good. Nobody ever told me a rolling pin could be so nice. And they, they're like, why are you doing this? And we get the opportunity to tell them this is a tangible expression of God's love for you. God loves everybody. Anybody who wants a massage can sit down here. If they choose to sit, they can get a massage. Anybody who chooses a relationship with Jesus can have it if they ask for it. And it gives us an opportunity to love on people, to speak in, into their lives, to give them information about homosexuality in the Bible, to just touch our community in a tangible way with God's love. We will encounter hundreds of folks that will never walk through the doors of this church. That's right. But we have a chance to sow seeds and to love on them. It's a good time. We have music. We've got stuff for the people. We visit. We share. We love on folks. And like I say, zero skill sets required. <laughs> if you can hold a rolling pin, you can do a rolling pin massage. So that will be next Friday. We're meeting a setup at 6 o'clock, and then we will begin at 7 from 7 to 10. We're just going to catch all the foot traffic that's there along Cedar Springs. You know, next weekend is Halloween weekend. The block party is on Saturday, so there should be probably a lot of foot traffic on Friday. Extra people in town. An awesome opportunity. If we have an abundance of folks show up for the rolling pin massage, then we will probably create some teams and send folks out treasure hunting, which... For those of you, if you show up and you don't know what it is, we'll let you know. If, you're, if you already know, you, then you know what you know. Got it? <laughs> anyway, so we are doing an outreach in the community next Friday. How many of you will participate? Can we see some hands? See some hands? See some hands? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Show up. Show up. Show up in front of the subway on Cedar Springs. It's right next to Hunky's, right on the corner of Cedar Springs and Throckmorton. So be, sh be sure to be there or be square. Okay. Uh, Ken and I has got something. He's making his way. On behalf of all the pastors, uh, last night, I tell you, we had the most wonderful time. Uh, you, you just don't know how wonderful it is to know that you're loved. And uh, we were last night. And uh, I appreciate our host home. Uh, Brent and Bill opened their home and uh, Sandra, I think, did all the cooking or a lot of it. I know some of it was brought in, and we had a wonderful time, and we didn't pick up anything. And if you've never been to their house, that's something to say because they brought everything down from up here all the way down here. And my thought was as we got there, hmm, what comes down must go back up. And they wouldn't let us pick up anything or take anything back up, and I just tell you, it was a wonderful evening of just being served by uh, the host committee, and I tell you, I appreciate that. And I appreciate Ken and I for heading all this up. Give him a big thank you for being a part of this. Ken and I. Thank you for that. But I so was blessed by lots and lots and lots of help. So I really appreciate um, all of you that, that participated. And 
there was lots of people behind the scenes doing things as well. So I, I thank all of you for that. Um, Shaw, you know what's so wonderful this morning? You get to come downstairs again. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have, if I could, have all the pastors come forward this morning. Individual? Okay. I'll call you. I'll call you. Shaw, I just want you to know that um, from the bottom of my heart, you have blessed me personally and everybody in this church, and we so much appreciate you, and this is just a token of our appreciation for what you do here. Thank you. Wow, um, you have really touched my life a lot, and um, your words of affirmation mean a lot to me, and your prayers are beyond belief, and I just really thank you so very much, and I know that you pray a lot for this congregation and for our community, and uh, it has not gone unnoticed. I want you to know that. Uh, Pastor Todd Gaston. Well, you, th this man, I, I, um, I want to be Todd when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> he does more than 10 people combined. And if you don't know by now, this man is on call 24-7 for not only us, but for the city of Dallas. I mean, he is always, always, always working. And when he's not working, as he said in Bible class this morning, he has a list going on in his head all the time. And so, just want you to know that you are our heart here. You, you bless us every time, even in times that we, we're not aware of. And I thank you for that. Pastor Johnny Head. I tell you what, it is amazing how you usher the Holy Spirit into this place. <laughs> your direction and your worship here is so powerful. It, it gives me chills. Every time I hear and I watch, your heart is on display here every Sunday. And I appreciate and love you so very much for putting so much into the worship here. Thank you. <laughs> Stephanie. And I'm not going to try to say your last name. <laughs> Savon? Okay. Wow. You know what? This is this is an incredible, incredible sister. She is so busy. School, full time, just medical school. Medical school. I mean, we all have some idea of what they go through, and yet her heart is the children this church and you know it was her vision for creating a children's ministry here and she has been dedicated to it and really has poured her heart into it and so I, she really deserves an extra special applause this morning because it wouldn't exist without you Jessica. She's so holy today. Yes, 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 yes. Stephanie is one of the very first people, whenever Britton and I walked in this building, that walked right up to us and made us feel at home and hugged us and just like poured her heart out and she just has an infectious smile. And you know what? 
the, the teachings that you did when we went to, to uh, Pride in the Truth, yeah. you, you're an amazing teacher. <laughs> and I just love you because your heart is people. And I, I am amazed at, at your heart and how open you are with sharing. And I love you. It's for not that. me. It's Jesus. Well, I, I, I realize. Really, I realize that. And that's what's so awesome about it. What's so awesome. Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, you are amazing. Um, an another one that had a heart for our youth here. And um, you have poured so much into that, and you have blessed this congregation in many ways. If you don't know, he not only does he do the youth, but when you get here in the mornings, he's been here for a long time. Right. He, he makes sure that everything gets put in its place. He knows where everything is. If you can't find something, go to Benny. He, he, <laughs> he, uh, he also sees to it being put back up. And that is amazing service. And so we really want you to know we appreciate your heart and your service. Pastor Tim Martin. Wow. Special, special, special guy. I, I know, just like said, uh, Jessica, it's Jesus. Yeah. And you know what? You are Jesus in skin here on earth. You, you display it all the time. You're never off. Um, I've never been around you. I've never talked to you. I've never listened to you that you do not speak Jesus. You speak love every time I'm here. You speak. And that is an amazing thing to do. It's amazing to be able to say about someone, and I love you for that. Pastor Bob. <laughs> I didn't know. that I could be accepted until I got here and to know how much you have poured into this community, into this church over the past 10 years just blows me away. And I know there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. We, we see you here for a couple of hours on Sundays, but you pour so much into this all week long, um, every day. And in the midst of that, you have your own life and own struggles that you go through. And sometimes, I, I know I've witnessed other pastors that, that have a life and, and the congregations kind of forget that, that you have struggles too. You're human, you're a man. And sometimes we forget that. And sometimes we don't appreciate just how much you love us because you put your personal life aside for us. And there's not very many people who, on a consistent basis, put their lives aside for others. And um, greater love have no man than a man that will lay down his life for them. And I have no doubts that you would lay your life down, and you have. You've laid your life down for us, and it's very, very much appreciated. We love you very much. Thank you. Well, we can all go home because we can't talk now. 
Uh, we're going to let the kids go now. Benny's taking the kids today. Letting Stephanie and Jessica have a day off. Can you believe that? That is a wonderful thing. Kathy? I think, I think if um, somebody has a big envelope, hers may have been in it, because I did notice one of the envelopes is thick. Well, there's, she has an envelope. No, that, that's, that's the right thickness. Oh, that's the right Kathy, I did not have you can have mine, because it's empty. Okay, so you, <laughs> we've, got uh, we've got it, I've got it. She knows, she knows the church is good for her. If there's been somebody that has been beside me, come up here. From day one. She's known me longer than any of you in this building. Has known me for nearly uh, 30 years. Anyway, so uh, we're just young chicks. And uh, all that to say, no one knows me better than her. And for her to be here for this long and stand beside me, that means an awful lot to me. She's one of the three board members, so you treat her with double honor, double respect, okay? She's not only a pastor and a friend, but she's a board member, and she supports me and prays for me and prays for you. So uh, she's right there, and if you're sick, she's there. If you're in the hospital, she's there. Everywhere. She just goes everywhere. So uh, just realize the fact that uh, sometimes people are, are due, and then sometimes people are due twice, and she's one of those people. Give her a hand clap this week. Uh, open your Bibles to uh, Luke chapter 6. We're going to receive an offering, but I want to share something with you. If anybody needs an offering envelope, you can get that. Uh, I want to... First off, I want to thank you all for the offering that you received for us last week and uh, Ken and I for heading that up and heading other things up. You know, sometimes people think that pastors just run on, on, on supernatural energy and they run supernaturally all the time and that doesn't always happen. And we do appreciate the fact that, that people remember us and pray for us and realize that, you know, we, we, we've got things going on too and it's just part of life. And, but the thing that we've chosen to do is this. And uh, that's, that's a good thing. Here in Luke chapter 6, you might take a look with, at Luke uh, 6.38 with me. And this is where, you know, all the people who use the word karma and all that stuff comes from. Give and it shall be what? Given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over for whatever measure you use, whether it's a small, medium, or large scoop. That will be the measure that's used to give back to you. You are in control of how much you get. And if you're not getting anything, guess what? The only person that to look at is not anybody else, not to get mad at God, but it's to look at yourself and say, you know, if I'm not getting something and uh, there's something wrong here, then you might want to take a look. It's like I said a few weeks ago, I can, tell, I can tell your relationship with God by looking at the first check you write every month. And oftentimes it's that point where people say, well, I'm not getting anything out of church. Are you giving anything to church? Are, are you giving anything? Are you, be, are you here? You know, uh, you can't get something from church sleeping in on Sunday mornings. You can't get something from church if you're not participating. You can't get something from church if you don't come and you don't sing and praise God when you get here. You just, there's nothing there for you because you just come and participate sit it's like sitting in the stands of a football game you can't say you played you say you went but you can't say you participated you have to get in the game you have to be a part and celebrate what's going on here and it's those people who give that have a place for you if you're not giving so i want you to think about that as we take a moment and let's let's revere the one who pays all of the bills yours the governments, whether they spend it right or wrong, you know, that's their responsibility. Our job is that we give it, we pay it, and we do what we're supposed to do. So join hands with somebody next to you and let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we are here to celebrate you. Well, that's the only reason. We don't come here to hear ourselves sing. We come here to worship you. So Heavenly Father, right now, we thank you that you are in charge of our finances, but you've given us the key to them. 
You said that if we would give, you would cause men and women to give it back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, that there will not be room enough to receive it all if we'll just prove you. So Father, we get the opportunity today to put our faith and our trust into action by taking that which you've given and to worship you back with a portion of it. You don't ask for all of it. You don't ask for all of our day. You just ask for a portion. So Father, we're here to give you our first fruits, not the leftovers, not after I get all my bills paid and all of my, all of my wants and needs taken care of. Father, we're here to worship you with our first fruits, the very best that we have to offer. And we do it now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen and amen. You're making out a check this morning, make it out to Crossroads. If you're putting cash in offering, raise your hands. And if you did not get an offering envelope, you can ask an usher to give you one and they will. How many of you, well, can you do two things at once? How many of you have a smartphone? How many of you have a smartphone or an iPhone? If you did not do this, and I, I ran out of time, I just, there was not enough of me this week. Uh, what I'd like you to do right now is to go to your app store. Open your phone up. I know it's unusual for me to ask you to do that, but I want you to open your phone up. Go to your app supply, your app store, wherever you go to get it. I'm going to ask that you download, while we're here right now, an app. Because that app is going to give you my notes. The scriptures in the right version, everything right as we go along. And so I know you will not be texting people in church, will you? No, Pastor Bob. We're not Facebooking either, okay? We're following up. But go to your app store and then in the search engine type Bible, B-I-B-L-E, right there at the very top. When that comes up, there should be one that says Life Church. Does it say that? Let me look at mine and see. U version, you can either type in U version or you can type in Bible, and it should be the very first one that pops up. Let me get mine up here. And it's U Y O U. Y O U version, not your version. But if you just type in Bible, like I'm typing in it right now, B I B. When I type that in, it just comes up with lifechurch.tv, Bible at the top. So that should be the very first one because it doesn't have the or anything in front of it. How many of you see that one? If you do, download that. Download that app. Because that's the one that we're going to use. Because when you click in there and you install it, it just takes a couple of minutes. And I know we're taking time, but this is something that we'll be doing. This will save you some time later on down the line. Just install it. And it should give you several different options. If you look at the one that says Bible, if you click on that, that will allow you to download every, they have 200 versions of the Bible in multiple languages, all available for you right there. Uh, but what I would like you to do is to go ahead and download uh, that. You don't have to download the versions today, but you can go back and do this. But you see one that says live? See the, the little icon there on your page that says live? Click on that for me. And then it'll say search for a live event. See that? Click on that. And then it'll give you a little search engine at the top. Type in Dallas Crossroads with the, with the space in there. Dallas Crossroads. And click search. Hit this little search icon. You see two that say the heart, do you not? Yes or no? Yes, those of you that are with me. You still working? The first one has a place where I've put some of my notes and a place for you to put notes in. The second one is just the scriptures. You're not going to have two from now on. You're only going to get one. What happened is I did the first one and closed the app on my computer, and it didn't tell me if it saved it or not. So I did it again. <laughs> so I know, no, I know now that I don't have to do that. And for some people that don't have phones that have this, you can just bring your Bible <laughs> for shop. Sure. But I'm doing that because a lot of people have asked for my notes and things along the line. 
and this way. And the better I get at this, the better you'll enjoy the experience. But this was the best I could do. <laughs> Dallas, Crossroads? Dallas Crossroads. Or you can put in 75219, which is our zip code. And it should pop up that way as well. But if it doesn't, talk to me afterwards and we'll have a class on this app. Maybe one Sunday morning real quick and early. How many of you have gotten there? Anybody have gotten there? The zip code will do it or Dallas Crossroads, either one. But uh, you'll see two that say the heart. Just click on the first one, the former one, because that one will have a note space in it. And you actually type in notes as you go along. And it'll have a place for us to put your prayer request. Even though I like the physical doing this, you'll actually at the end of the day be able to put your prayer request in there and that will come directly to me. And then I will put them in the box for you after I pray for them. It has lots of, lots of applications to it and we'll be trying to use them more as we kind of go along and I get more comfortable with this. But here we are. <laughs> Did you get there? It's really pretty slick. I mean, when you think about it, because now all you do is click on the scripture and you'll actually be using the same version that I do. So you won't have to carry a bunch of Bibles with you. And you can actually download the one for the Amplified. So when Kidder and Tim are teaching, you'll actually have an Amplified version of the Bible too, which is really pretty cool. So I'm going to give all the pastors a lesson on this. So, and I'll tie you into this where you can use it in the future if you want. Okay, let's take a moment. Let's pray because I got to get my head out of this box. Okay. Get it back here. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you, I believe, if Jesus were here, he would use every means at his disposal to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. I believe he would use everything. And Father, we're going to use as much as we can get our hands on and that we can use. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. and We thank you for this lesson in the series on the heart because we want your heart. So, Father, you speak to us today in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen and amen. I want to talk to you just for a few moments this morning about the most important element of your whole life, and it is your heart. It's not that 10 ounces of muscle that beats away on the inside of you, but it's what makes you who you are. It's that element of, uh, of expression. And so I want us to take us back. We're going to go a little further back today. We're going to go about 1,000 years B.C. just for a moment here as we kind of get into this. And the fact that in this thousand years BC, we have a prophet whose name is Samuel, who has been instructed by God to go to the house of Jesse, and he's going to anoint a new king. Uh, the times of the day were, the, the, the whole tribe and nation of Israel are in turmoil. They're in economic despair. All the countries around them are trying to take over Israel as if things have changed today. 3,000 years later, it's still the same. They still want a little piece of land that's about 50 miles wide by about 125 miles long. It's because that is the birthright of the whole nation of Israel. And had Abram not slept with Hagar, we wouldn't be having this problem. So even though God forgave Abraham for sleeping and causing that, we still suffer the consequences, don't we? So sin never gets away from us, does it? Anything done outside of faith is what? Sin. So we've got to be careful. So uh, the economy, ec economy was in a tumult. The people were divided. They were looking for some leadership. Saul had provided it for a mean time. And the problem was he was a bad leader. Uh, he forced people to do things that they didn't want to do. He drove the people. And they were crying out, God, send us somebody. And if you don't like somebody that's in office, and I'm going to just tell you right up front, then you better be crying out to God to put the man that he wants in there in the office. Because the Bible says that he puts in charge the man that he wants. So, you know, I got news for you. You need to change the way you vote. If you don't like what's going on, you have the freedom to start to examine who's coming up and what's there and start to look. Be an educated person out there who can vote and be a good citizen. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, but the, the problem was as they got to the house, as Samuel got to the house of Jesse, if you'll take a look at that first scripture, 1 Samuel 16, we're going to start reading here. And I'm reading out of the NIV. When they arrived, Samuel saw Elijah and thought, Surely the Lord anointed stands here before the Lord. 
But the Lord said unto Samuel, Do not consider his appearance, because he's being instructed what to look for in this king. And Samuel said, you know, was told by God, Don't look at his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinahab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Samoth uh, pass by and Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said unto him, the Lord has not chosen these. Verse 11, so he said to Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He's tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Can you imagine waiting? I mean, they had to go send for him, and then he had to find somebody to take care of the flock, and then he came back. So he sent for him, and he had him brought in. He was glowing. What was he doing? Glowing with what? Health. <coughs> this is not a bad specimen. But he was unlike all of the previous ones. Jesse thought, surely out of all of these wonderful, magnificent sons I have, these are the, these are the Angelina and Brad of my clan. Here they are, the pretty people. I'm showing you the pretty folks. And God says, none of these. But he's glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Uh, Samuel then went to Ramah. He just went on. It was like nothing. I mean, here you have an opportunity of setting into place the man who is going to rule the whole tribe of Israel for a long time. And he thought nothing of it because his job was over. He did what God told him to do, and he went on. You know, a lot of times people look at pastors and say, well, boy, they were out of there. Their job's over. You know, uh, last night, 10 after 7, I'm thinking, they said 7. I'm out of here. And I left because I had things to do. Sometimes when we are doing things, we just realize that, you know what? It's over, and there's a time to move on. David was chosen by God, seemingly to everyone around the least fitting, but God looks at the heart. And what was he looking for? He was looking for something that looked like his heart. That's the thing. And that's what I want us to talk about today. And there, you know, he was certainly athletic. Remember the slingshot? He certainly knew how to do certain things. He had certain skills and abilities. Uh, his personality, the Bible says, made him very popular with the people. He was a fine musician. If you'll remember, he played so that the spirits that were around troubling Saul would leave. So we know that he was gifted musically. Uh, he had a brain. Brilliant. He wrote psalms that are still being read by people around the world in multiples of languages. David was anointed, powerful, a specimen that was after God's own heart. There's no shortage of fabulous looking people, is there? How many of you looked in the mirror this morning? Did you see that fabulous person when you looked in the mirror? Absolutely. See Joe shaking his head. He's the only one that outwardly would say, that was me, that was me, that was me. <laughs> Neil saying, boy, if you'd seen him like I saw him when he got up this morning, it would be a different story. Right, Neil? Oh, yeah. Hair's all here, face like this. It's a good thing you love him, I can tell. It's a good thing. Great athletes, popular politicians, superb musicians, geniuses of all kind abound in this world. But we still have battle in Congress, don't we, for having the right heart at what our country needs. We still have absent 
Great leadership in the workplaces, we see it every day. Absent in our schools every single day. We have people there who are simply there for a paycheck. They don't care about your kids. It's obvious, look at the scores. They don't care. They don't stay after four o'clock. Four o'clock, that bell rings, they're out there. But you'll see those who have a heart after kids buy their own supplies because the school district can't afford them. You'll see those teachers who have a heart after kids who will take their whole Saturday, when that may be the only day they have between school and work and, and doing things around the house, they'll take the only day they have to prepare for the kids that they love because that's what they do. That's their heart. Doesn't take a lot to see it. But when you see it, you recognize it. But I tell you, we have a lot of Goliaths on every corner, don't we? Our world is filled with them, and we have all the right instruments. You see, that slingshot was the right instrument, but we don't have a lot of people who have the ability to hurl that, to hit the target, and to make the difference. In spite of David's flaws, which he had many, we know them, God still loved him. And I've, I've pondered with that on this lesson. Because David's heart is the one, the example that God's given us. And I wonder, well, how can you mess up so many times that even at the end, people, when they say the name David, they say it with fondness and reverence and, and it's filled with so much stuff. And you have people that are, you know, the David in, in Florence. I, I've had the privilege of seeing it. And you sit there and you look at that and you think, was that what he really looked like? But that was what he really looked like in the eyes of that particular artist. I don't know if you know the story about that particular statue, but the artisan who took that, that piece of stone had been rejected by several other sculptors. Been rejected. It had been mined out and no one saw it. But someone saw that and began to carve out of that one of the most beautiful and revered statues in the whole world because it had an inspiration to it. Take a look at Acts chapter 13. Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, who was a doctor, by the way, I think doctors see things differently, don't they, Brent? They do. They're more analytical. They can't get it out of their head, but they see it anyway. They see it like that. Brent has a has had challenges getting out of his head. And he's doing a better job. He's realizing that, you know, God's in control. He's in charge. Here in Acts chapter 13, look at verse 23, 22 and 23. It says, after removing Saul, God did that. God removed Saul. He made David their king. And God testified concerning him, David. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart he will do everything i want him to do how many of you can say i have done everything that god has asked you to do i know i can't i'm trying he will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Savior Jesus, as he promised. The implications are from this, that, from this scripture right here that the right heart started the whole work of salvation. From David brought all of the lineage of Jesus. And because of that right heart, we got Jesus out of all that because he was birthed into this earth because of that. This week, Shaw came to see me. Uh, how many have Vonage phone lines? You got Vonage or something that are voice over IP? They're, they're very popular. I've had it for several years. And uh, when my sister went to Germany to live for uh, a few years, it gave me the ability to call her and talk to her for three cents a minute. I'm not making an advertisement, but it's a tremendous thing. 
So I could call her every day if I wanted to and talk with her and check with her and see how she's doing. Well, you know, she's moved to the Philippines and she's on a, on a phone that I can't get to all the time. So uh, I still got it, didn't remove it. But I have talked to Africa, I've talked to other continents, talked to people, ministry people around the world, and I told Shaw she wanted to talk to this pastor, or this minister man in, in uh, Uganda this week. And so we made arrangements, a uh, timetable for him to be waiting for our phone call, and we actually got to call and talk with him this week. And uh, they talked for about, a, about 45 minutes. We lost them one time, we had to get back with them. But I'll tell you something. You can take and close your eyes and never see Shaw. But I saw the heart of God. And I sat there and I cried because I saw someone whose heart is so for, for people just like us who don't have a fraction of what we have. A hundred dollars a year is a good wage in Uganda. A hundred dollars a year. Yet I, I hear people complaining about everything. And it, uh, you know, I just want you to know there are people who are suffering with Christ right now for the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're suffering because they don't care what it takes to minister to those people. They have chosen to put their life at risk to tell the LGBT people in that country that God loves them. They're putting their families at risk. They know what they're doing. We've asked them point blank. Is your life in danger because of what you're doing? Yes. Does it stop them? No. Can I get you to bring some of your neighbors? No. Is there a problem here? I, I, I just want you to think about the fact that the heart about what we're doing as far as ministry is concerned, what this church is concerned about, it's about salvation for people. Deliverance from what they're involved in. And I tell you, these countries, in, to have organizations in this country who are tax exempt, taking those tax exempt dollars to other countries and bribing politicians who are voting to make that a criminal offense to be who you are, I think is beyond me, beyond my comprehension. And do it all under the crusade flag of the fact that we're doing this in the name of the gospel. I've been outraged. Makes me want to take everybody's taxes and set us away, including ours, just to stop that just in order to stop that. God's heart, folks, is meant to supply and resupply on an ongoing basis our heart. How many of you have ever known somebody have a pacemaker? That was an electronic device that was implanted in their body to keep their heart beating. God's heart is the pacemaker that guides the rhythm of our own heart. And the thing that I am wanting you to realize is that, you know what? You can do a lot of things because you feel an obligation to do them. And there's a reason to do them because God wants them done. Uh, the other day I was in Starbucks, Kathy's other job keeping Starbucks going. That's her other job because she likes Starbucks. I, and I thought about you when I was having this happen to me. They have this walnut, banana walnut bread. Has anybody ever had that? Okay, I'll know not to go behind you. Now, 
what happened was I was in the Starbucks, and I don't go very often, but I do like occasionally like to go and get a cup of coffee, and I like a piece of that walnut banana bread. And I was standing in line, and there was this person, I'm not going to say gender, this person was standing in line, and I one piece, just one piece left. And I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting very patiently, and this person's there, and they're giving their order, and then suddenly, it was like a basketball team comes in, and this person begins to say, does anybody want anything while I'm in line? <laughs> what? There's like a dozen, a dozen people. And this individual begins then to take all of their orders and putting them all through. And I'm going, excuse me. I was coming unglued. I really was. Because I'm thinking, they're over there eyeing all this stuff that's in the thing. And she just, giving this order, did not mean to do that was just giving this order to this individual and the, just taking it down. And I'm going like, I want to take you out back. <laughs> then God convicted me of that. He said, how many times have you been there? I don't cut people's lines, but I have the attitude that's wrong. That attitude will cause me great pain one day because God's going to remind me. He said, I love you anyway, but you did this. I'm sure that's what David had to answer to. I loved you in spite of all that, but why did this happen? Why did this happen? Because somewhere our heart got out of sync with God's. You see, God's heart would have said, let them have it. You don't need it. Look. I'm trying to save you from that piece of banana walnut bread. I don't see it that way, God, because I really wanted it. I stopped. I don't normally stop, but I stopped. I wanted that piece of cake. How many of you have seen the Little Britain shows? The cake, the cake, I gotta have the cake. <laughs> Felt like Marjorie, I've gotta have my face in the cake. Our heart should rule us. It's very interesting that the Bible talks about the word heart. Well, I'm not going to get all this done today, but that's okay. It's just a, it's the beginning. The Bible talks about the heart in several different ways. And it gives several different definitions of heart in the Bible. One is we use the word heart. Another one is the word will. And another one is the word spirit. And the Bible uses all of those particular words interchangeably. And I think it's interesting because we have had people say, uh, they say, uh, his heart just wasn't in it. His heart just wasn't in it. They'll also make statements like, he didn't have the will to do that. Or they'll make a statement, they lost spirit. Because they, they're losing their heart. The heart was not involved anymore. It didn't want to do those things. Take a look at Proverbs 4, verse 23. That's your next verse probably coming up. It says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. See, in that, was that not right? Proverbs 4, 23. Guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life is another version. But what happens is your heart determines your actions. Now, we think our mind does. Your mind can take charge of things. You see, it was my mind that caused me to get angry with that person. It wasn't my heart. My heart was subject to the what I thought. So it says, be careful of what you think because out of your heart flow the issues of life. Be careful what you allow your mind to think. That means your heart has got to gain ascendancy over your brain. I'll tell you, that's a hard thing. Your heart just isn't one aspect of who you are. It's the central, motivating, reality sorting, life determining thing about you. Look at Matthew chapter 15 real quick. Now I'm just going to tell you the story. Uh, I'll preface that by saying in the Bible, 
if you had some funds, had money, and you said, this money I'm going to dedicate to the service of God, your family could be starving and you wouldn't have to give that money to take care of them because you had dedicated that money to God. So if you really wanted to hold on to things, you could say, I'm dedicating this to the glory of God and you could keep it. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees here that they, because they're of, of their stingy heart, their family would be in need and they would say, oh, but this was dedicated to God. I'm sorry, I can't give this to you. I'm so sorry. Because I get to keep it. And he's saying, you know what? You've forgotten the very purpose. And he said, you know what? You've even overlooking. As a matter of fact, over in Mark, you don't have to look at this. I've got it in there probably. Mark 7 uh, three through four, it says that they not only washed their hands because they were, they were washing their hands, but they washed everything that, they, that their hands touched. They were so legalistic. The Pharisees were so legalistic that they couldn't see the very needs beyond doing the things that they were doing, having to wash and do all this stuff. They were so meticulous in doing the works that they forgot the purpose. The Pharisees are like the first sons of Jesse. From the appearance on the outside, they were doing everything exactly right. They were the Angelina and Brads of the time. Fine and handsome, Hall of Fame candidates. They were athletes, they were strong, they were virile, they had the sharp chin, look, everything. But God passed them all by because they didn't have his heart. A lot of times we wonder, well, why, why, why did I get bypassed? And I can tell you, if you take a good scan of your heart, maybe that would help you. Realize why. I will tell you though, these Pharisees, they ate kosher. Everything was proper. They avoided sinners. They always said that. They had brilliant brains, studied the Jewish law, and they sang psalms like lyric opera people. In other words, they were a lot like some of us. Come in and we do all the motions. Come in and do it all for the right pretense, but we really forget the soul, heart, and purpose of why we're doing it. See, I, when I was growing up, I, I went to church because I was made to go to church. Had to. Because if I didn't go to church, I didn't get to do all the things during the week that I wanted to do, because it was kind of like a prerequisite. You go to church, you do those things, and you get to do other things. It's a privilege. So we got to thinking that one equaled the other. Well, the problem was we got the the wrong reasons behind it. Our problem was that we didn't know what the real purpose for going was. We thought the purpose was going so that we get to do with these other things, but the real purpose was going so that we could meet God when we got there. These Pharisees had two things wrong that happened to them. One, their hearts really weren't oriented towards honoring one's parents because they withheld money from their parents when their parents were in need. And Jesus reminded them, he says, you know what, what's the fifth commandment? Honor your parents, your father and your mother. Oh, in the New Testament it says, so that your days on earth will be long. The second thing was the Pharisees, the Pharisees believed that appearing to do God's will was the same as actually doing it. So you can, you can appear like you're doing everything right, you know. You can appear like you're going to church for all the right reasons. You carry the Bible, you go to church, very solemn. <laughs> we fellowship with everyone, hug, 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 sit down and inside we're sleeping. We're not realizing that the whole reason why we're here is so we can gain some inside knowledge of who God is. Matthew 15, 7 through 9, and I don't know if that one's in there. Jesus calls it. He calls these guys right on them. You know, we were talking about love, speaking the truth in love. I was wondering... I'm trying to find it here because he makes this statement. He says, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship in vain. And I'll tell you the one thing that I would like you to do this week, as we kind of enter into this series about the heart and the purpose of the heart and the reason why we shouldn't think with our minds, but we should 
actually learn how to feel? This is the scripture that David prayed of all prayers. It's found in Psalm 139, verse 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So this week, along with Pastor Todd's homework, dare yourself to sit there in that time of meditation, whenever that time of the day is for you, and pray that prayer, but be careful. Because the evidence will come, the voice of God will begin to speak, and he'll begin to point out several things, and I guarantee you, it's not always comfortable. But the good news is, you'll find more of God's heart working in you. His desire is to give you a heart that beats and feels just like his. That's what he wants. Join hands with somebody next to you this morning. Heavenly Father, we, we want your heart. We want to sense your being. We want to do all the things for the right reasons, not because we are there for a show, but because we're there because we want to show you how much we love you. We don't care what anybody else sees. We're not here to perform. We're here to just be here for you. Search our hearts, O oh God, as a church. When we leave this building, all the salt is in this salt shaker. We can make no difference in anyone's life until we're spilled out into this community that needs it so badly. So Heavenly Father, I thank you that you will begin to do a work in our heart. And next week as we learn about the heart attack, one of the worst things that could happen, Father, we pray that we don't suffer from that, that we will learn how to keep our heart really close to yours and in beat and in time and in rhythm with you. So Heavenly Father, I, I speak to every person here today. I speak that you do have the heart of God. That you have a heart that's after His, to please Him no matter who's watching, what you're doing, who cuts in front of you at the line or orders in front of you, don't get angry. Remember, that's not God's heart. So, Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and we give you the glory for it.